Hey, what's up investors? Are you also curious on how you can save some money easily just in 2021? Now, one of the four money hacks that I will be sharing today is don't buy today, but buy tomorrow. Now, if you're wondering what that actually means, well, be sure to keep on watching as I will be sharing four money hacks that will help you save some money here in 2021. My name is Lucas, and as an investor from ExcelWealth.com, I'm always interested in sharing my ideas on personal finance, investing, and real estate. Now, if you stay until the end, I'll even challenge you to do a money hack with me, you know, just like this. For now, let's go into the video. Okay, let's go back to the don't buy today, but buy tomorrow. Now, I'm sure you've heard of this one before, and really, you know, it, you just really have to do it. What it says, just like that. If there's something that you'd really want to buy, tell yourself it's okay to buy. There's one requirement, and that is don't buy today, but sleep over it. And if it's still the urge the next day, tomorrow, the next day, if you still have the urge, then buy it. Now, I can see you thinking, Lucas, why is this a money hack? This is just buying the product a day later. Absolutely. But did you know that the most purchases we make are spontaneous purchases that we make on the spot? Because let me let me ask you this. The moment you buy something, I'm and I, I'm not talking about the groceries or something, but when you're trying to buy a new phone or a new laptop or something that is just a little bit too expensive for you to buy every day. And these are the products that if you really look into, these are the products that most people really enjoy researching before time, before actually purchasing. Now, for example, phones. Now, I'll tell you this, I love phones. Now, it's not that I buy a new phone every day. I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not a phone reviewer on YouTube. But when I know it is time for me to buy a new phone, I'll tell you this, I really enjoy comparing all those phone models with each other. Now, what would be the best deal? What would I need in a best phone? What would I want to have in a new phone? Would it be better to buy, uh, you know, like the flagship of last year? Or would it be better to buy a budget phone from this year? Okay, I get it, Lucas. I'm not buying it today, but still that just means you're extending the purchase. Yes, but the reason why you don't buy today is because you're doing all that research. And in most cases, it just really pumps up your energy and your enthusiasm for the product. Well, at least that does for me. And if that does for me, most likely it also does for you. At least something similar, right? So if you sleep on it for at least a day and tomorrow, the moment when you wake up, you, know, you just have your normal day. You just do your thing and you still believe that you really need this product. Well, then maybe it is a necessary buy. Maybe you really need it. Maybe if, if it's still there for you to buy, you think, I really need this. Then, you know, you can just buy it. But if you don't, you can really see it like this. You can live without the product. And most likely, if you did buy it, it would have been an unnecessary purchase. And this way, you will have saved your money straight away. Now, the second money hack that I would like to share with you is, remember, you always have a choice each and every time you want to purchase a product. Now, this time, we could think about daily products. Okay, Lucas, daily products, so what do you mean? Like something like a cup of coffee or something? Absolutely. Now, when we use that example of cup of coffee, if you go to work every day and you buy a Starbucks coffee every morning just before you go to work, that'll cost you about $5 each time you take that venti cup of a coffee. Now, I'm not saying that you're not allowed to have any cup of coffee, but you gotta think about like, like this. If you do this five days a week and about 40 weeks a year, taking into account that you have holidays and that some days you don't really buy, but most days you do so, 40 weeks a year, that would, you know, because, you know, sometimes the queue was too long, you didn't want to wait, so, or you couldn't buy, or the, you know, you got to catch a train or whatever, you get the idea. Well, 40 weeks, five days a week is about $1,000 that you spend on coffee each year just because you had that one cup of coffee. Now, coming back to the money hack number two, that you have a choice each and every day, that just means, would you rather have the product or would you rather have the money? Now, if I would tell you that you would have to wait a year and I would give you a thousand bucks, just like that, like, here you are, a thousand bucks. Or would you just say, no, no, you know what, Lucas, keep your thousand bucks, I can at least keep drinking that cup of coffee every morning I go to work. Well, my question is to you, 
what would you rather have? Well, that really depends. Now, I can't make a choice that is just black or white. It's not either I want to have the money or I want to have the coffee. You know, I, in the end, I actually want to have both money and coffee. Ah, there you have it. That's your dilemma. Now, you know that you can make your own coffee each morning. Take that coffee along in a thermos flask, you know, in those bottles that keep your drink either hot or cold for several hours. Now, this way you can save your money straight away. And if you think about it, it'll cost you maybe about a dollar to prepare that cup of coffee, you know, the moment you take your own coffee, you know, from home. And using those numbers, you know, using those same numbers, the moment you have five days a week, 40 weeks in a year, that'll cost you about $200 per year. That means you've saved up $800 per year, just like that, because you take away your own coffee. Ha, huh, Lucas, that all sounds nice, but I'll tell you this, I don't drink any coffee to start out with, so I just saved at $1,000 a year right away. <laughs> okay, makes sense, but this money hack doesn't only apply to coffee, of course. Like I mentioned before, it's applicable to any kind of daily product. Each time you know that you have the choice, would you rather have the product or would you rather have the money? And that's the whole idea of this money hack. The third money hack is putting things into perspective. Like uh, putting things into perspective? Like, do you mean like this? Like, should I look at things differently or something? I, I don't get it, you tell me. Well, to be honest, actually, yes. Whenever you spend money, you gotta put it into perspective. Like, how many hours do I have to work for it to be able to pay for this product? Now, for example, if your hourly rate is only $50 per hour, which is still a fine amount, of course, but, and the phone that you would like to buy is like $700. That just means that you would have to work 14 hours in order to purchase that phone. Now, the question is, is it really worth it? Is it really worth the 14 hours of work? Because, hey, you work so hard for the phone. Now, that phone company just sells their phone just once. Or, or more often, of course, but that makes them more motivated to create and design more phones like these. As for you, what does it give you the moment you spend that money? Now, you need to work all those hours to be able to purchase the product that you wanted. Now, the question for you is, now this phone, as an example, does it generate you any business? Is it, you know, is this like an investment for you? Like this phone, if it was just a desire that you wanted to have, but doesn't generate you any money directly, then you have to know this is just a liability that costs you money. Now, if that's the case, that's, that should be okay. Oh, well, now I kind of feel stupid because, you know, I just got myself a new phone and I was very happy with it until I watched this part of the video, Lucas. Now, I don't know if I should be thanking you or hitting you. Well, I'm sorry, it's, it's you know, I, I don't, I don't want to make you feel sad, but I want to make you aware that you have to put things into perspective the next time you buy products. Now, don't let things like this make you feel bad, but you have to compare it to something else. Like, you know, if you think about it, it's like wanting to eat that delicious chocolate bar. The moment you eat it, you know, you think about it, oh, it's delicious, I want it. But the moment you finish it, you feel horrible because, you know, it wasn't that great in the end. and. If you put it into perspective, you, the only thing is you gain some, uh, you, you gain some possibly weight, you know? Okay, Lucas, you're not making things any better by saying things like this. Okay, so maybe it's a good idea to move on to our next money hack. Okay, so our previous money hacks were about how you can save money by looking at things differently. Now, this last money hack that I would like to share with you is that you should also look at future values of the products that you're gonna buy. Now, let's go back to the example of that cup of coffee. Now, if you believe that this cup of coffee from the Starbucks is necessary, well, sure, you know, that, that's very important. Now, not only put that into perspective, but also look at the future value of that cup of coffee. Lucas, I have a future value, like, of a cup of coffee? Like, what? I have no idea what you're talking about, man. Well, you have to see it like this. That cup of coffee is worth $5 the moment you buy it. Now, that same $5, if you would have invested it in something passively, of course, and let's say just you invested it in an S&P 500 with an annual growth of only 8% per year, and then just leave that in for 10 years, then I'll tell you this, that $5 is worth about $11 after 
you know, after 10 years. The question is, if you know, is it still worth it buying that cup of coffee? Now, if the answer is yes, then accept that you've spent $11 of the future. Ha! Now, I know that I can spend that $11 in the future, so I don't really care about the $11. So, Starbucks, let's go. Here I come. Okay, fair enough. How about that phone of $700? If you would have invested that amount and left it there for 10 years, then it would have been worth over $1,500 already. And just like the coffee, the phone is just something you use and it doesn't grow in value the moment you purchase it. So it's not like an asset the moment you buy it. Hmm, I do know that this phone is uh, absolutely not going to be worth $1,500 in 10 years time let alone that I would still have this phone in 10 years time, because I suppose that I would at least buy two more phones in the two years, uh, in the 10 years time. Right. And there you have it. This is how you can look at the future values of products. Now, these money hacks today shouldn't be, you know, shouldn't be scaring you that you shouldn't be wanting to buy anything at all anymore, but it should make you aware of how things are valued in life. And you know what? Since you stayed until the end, we could make this an even more interesting money hack video if you want to. Now, each time you're already faced with the choice buying the product or not buying the product. And if you're not buying the product then, then of course, you know, therefore you're actually choosing to stick with the money. You know, that's the choice that you've made. And with that, please note down how much money you've saved just now. Now, this is something that I would like to challenge you on. For one month, every time you've saved money, write it down. How much was it amount? How much was it possibly worth? Now, what was it? Like each time you'll see like, you know, I wanted to buy this cup of coffee, but I didn't. So I just saved five bucks. Oh, I just wanted to buy this chicken sandwich on the sixth of the month, you know, this, this month. But I didn't, so I saved that money again. Now I'll tell you this, by the end of the month, you should be able to see the whole list of things that you've saved and didn't buy. Because in the end, you gotta see like this, these are the urges that you've resisted. And believe me, the moment you see this list of products that you've resisted, most likely, I'll tell you this, they weren't that much interesting to begin with. They were just a waste of your money if you did buy them. Because it seemed like, you know, you survived and you didn't miss out on anything. Now that the time has passed, of course. The moment you take a look at this list of products, at the end of the month, let me tell you this, you will be super proud of yourself. Thinking like, wow, you know what? I just resisted it. I know I made it. And this is what I saved. It's gonna make you super proud. And you think like, you know, I can be saving money far more consciously. So my question to you is, are you going to take on this challenge? And if you are, let me know down below in the comments if you're gonna do this. Because if you're gonna do this, I'm gonna join you with you. And with that, I would like to thank you for watching today's video. If you liked it, be sure to let me know down below in the comments and smash that like button because, you know, it will really influence YouTube algorithms. Well, that's a difficult word to say. <laughs> and of course, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, be sure to do so because then you'll become an XL crew member. I thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next. Happy investing. Bye-bye.